Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in unit 4, lesson 8, part 2. The instructions for this app is pretty simple, they just want us to get it to work. So before we do that, you should have looked at your activity guide, and you should have played with the app in part 1, just to kind of see where some of the variables that you're going to need are. For this we need 5 variables that we're going to create, and if we look at the app over here, we can see that we need one for the day. We're going to need one for the age. We're going to need one for this discount code. We'll need a variable for the price. And we're going to need one for the string of text that goes down here. So with that, let's go ahead and begin creating our variables. The first one, let's go ahead and call it day. The second one, we'll call age. The third one, we'll call discount, the fourth one we'll call price, and the last one we'll call ticket string. Make sure you practice your camel case when you're naming your variables. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and look at on the event, which is this click. Some of the things that we're gonna need is we're gonna need to update the day, the age, and if there's a discount code input here. So let's go ahead and bring in this one three times. First, we'll look at day. We need to get that from this drop down. And as I hover my cursor over the day, you can see what the ID of this drop down is. So now that we have put day here, we're going to go to the UI controls. And what we're looking for is get text. We'll click and drag that over. Our ID is going to be the day drop down. So we'll click the arrow here. And we'll select that. And so whatever gets put here will update that variable. The next thing that we need to update is the age. The age drop down is called that age drop down. So for our variable, we'll go ahead and type in age, which is the variable that we created up here. We'll get text again. Age drop down. Now the last one that we need to do is update the discount variable. So let's go ahead and type that in. We're going to get text again. And this one is called discount something, but as we click the drop down, it's going to be discount input. Now that we've done that, we've updated all our variables based upon the selection when clicked. Now we need to go ahead and create the if else. But before we do that, some of the things that you should have noted when you were playing around with the app is the different combinations of things that could happen. And it's important that you understand this because if you get a portion of your if else statement wrong, when it's checking through the if, it might come to a conclusion early and not run anything else. For example, one of the criteria is the age. If you had that towards the top of your if check, it's going to check out of other things that are more important as far as what the price of the ticket is going to be. With that said, some things to note, the base price of the ticket is $10. On the weekend, it's $10 regardless of your age. You do have the ability to get in for free if it's Friday and you have the discount code free Friday, all caps. And then there's a discount for children during the week if they are 18 or younger. So we need to try and keep track of all of that as we're writing out our if statement. So we're going to go to the control section of the toolbox and we know it's going to be an if else statement. So let's go ahead and click and drag that underneath here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if it's the weekend. The weekend would be Saturday or Sunday as text. To do that, I'm going to go to the math section. We're going to look to see if it's Saturday or Sunday. So let's go ahead and click and drag that over. And then within these sections, we need to see if the text is going to be specific. So I'm going to click the two equal signs here and drag one on the left. And then I'm going to do the same on the right. So for the left side, I'm going to go ahead and type in day because we're looking to see if the variable that's carrying is equal to, we're going to have quotation marks, Saturday capitalized. We have this right here, so we're looking for that, or we're looking to see if the variable day is Sunday. If that's the case, we now need to tell this part of the code what to do. If it's Saturday or it's Sunday, we need to go ahead and assign the price of $10. So let's go back to our variables. 
we're going to do this one right here because we're going to set our variable. We'll type in price and it's equal to $10. We should add a comment to this because that's best practice. First check is to see if the ticket was made on the weekend. You can have that comment or you can have multiple comments. Remember, more is often better, even if it seems cumbersome, just because it helps you and anybody else reviewing your code know what's going on. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to look to see if it's Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and click this plus button here because it allows me to put a check here for the else if. So we're going to go back to our math portion of this. This time we're looking for two things. It's not going to be an or, it's going to be an and. So we'll drag that in here. And then we're going to do two equal signs again because we're looking to see if the variable is a specific thing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look to see if the discount is equal to, and the discount code is free Friday, all caps, no spaces. And we'll close out that string of text with another quotation. And we're looking to see if the variable day is Friday. And that is also in quotation marks because it is a string of text. If both of those criteria are met, we need to set the ticket price to zero. So let's go back to our variable. We'll do this one because we're setting the variable. Our variable is price, and we're going to type in the number zero. Now that we've done that, we need to add another else if, so we'll click the plus here. But before we add any more to that, let's go ahead and add a comment to this section of the code. And we'll drop it right above that else if, and we'll add the comment. Tickets are free with discount code and if it's Friday. Our next else if is going to be to check to see if the age is 18 or younger. So we're going to go ahead and go to the math section. We're going to go ahead and select this less than or equal to. Type in age for the variable and it's less than or equal to 18. If that's the case, we're going to go ahead and set the price variable to 5. So let's go to our variables. Let's use this one because it sets it. And we'll do price 5. And we'll go ahead and note that. All right, now that we've done all that, we have one more thing that we need to add, and that's the base price. The base price is $10 if none of the other criteria is met. So let's go back to variables. We'll go ahead and assign that. Price 10, and we'll go ahead and note that as well. All right. So now that we've done that, code.org tells us that we need to create text for the ticket. That text is going to fall into this section so we can see the area is called the ticket output. But before we do that, we need to update the variable with the information that we need. I'm going to go ahead and throw up a quick graphic of the app when the app is running correctly so that you can see the format of how it should look because we're going to have to add some returns in there. So let's go ahead and go to variables. We're going to go ahead and set our variable here. What we call the variable was ticket string. We're going to have to use a combination of the pluses to concatenate the message together. So let's go to the math. And we'll just go ahead and throw a few of these in there. We can easily delete them if we have too many. That's not a problem. Let's add one more. I think that'll be enough. If not, we can quickly go to show text and delete out a plus or add a plus or just drag in another one if we need to. As I look over the example from the previous part of this lesson, I can see the first thing that I need to do is have the text day, colon, space, and then a quote. And then we need to add our variable for the day. So we'll go ahead and type that in. Plus, in quotations, we're going to do the slash n to do the return. And within that same little bubble area, we can add age colon, space, in our quotation marks. This time we're going to go ahead and type in the variable age. We'll tab to the next section. 
We'll go ahead and do that return again. Price. And this time, we're going to go ahead and type in price. So what we've done is we've combined some text with some of the variables that we created so that this can port out to the ticket portion of this. Before we move on, we want to go ahead and create a comment. And then finally, what we need to do is set our text on the app. So we're going to go to the UI controls. We're going to go ahead and select this one, set text. The first thing that we want to select is this section right here, ticket output. That's what we're going to update. And for this, we want to go ahead and delete all of this text out, including the quotation marks. And this is where we want to go ahead and type in ticket string. Let's see if our program runs. So on Monday with the age of five, that looks good. Let's go ahead and choose 21. We can see the price has been updated to $10. What happens if it's the weekend and the person is five? We can still see that the price is $10. And let's do one final check. Let's do Friday. Say the person is 22. And let's go ahead and type in that discount code. And we can see that the price is zero. If you use this video to run through this part of the unit, I would encourage you to click the version history on the top right corner of this workspace and click reset project so that you can work on this again. I know I say this a lot. The point of this project is not for you to get a good grade. The point of this project is so that you can put to practice the things that you've learned in this part of the unit. So I would encourage you to reset this to the default settings and try and redo this without any video helps or at least until you feel comfortable working through this and using the different variables and controls. Once you're done with this, make sure you hit finish.